Hello everyone, my name is Rose Wood and I'm a portrait artist based in Doncaster. Today I'm going to talk to you a bit about portraits. Although I could talk about famous artists and their work that you'll all recognise. Mona Lisa, Van Gogh and his self-portrait. I want to talk about artists that you've probably never heard of. These artists change the society around them at their time, using portraits. In 1548, Flemish painter Katharina van Hemsen painted a self-portrait. She painted herself painting at her easel. This wasn't normal and this was possibly one of the first kinds of self-portraits depicting an artist working at their easel. Although she was a socially accepted painter in her time, in 1554 she got married and then her paintings were no longer found. You could still say though that her self-portrait may have influenced artists later on. In the late 16th century, early 17th century, Sophie Nisba Anguinzola was one of the first female artists to gain an international reputation. The chess game was one of her most famous artworks. At the time, Renaissance paintings were strongly influenced by the narrative, by the subject of art is what mattered. In this painting, The Chess Game, she paints her sisters and their chaperone. This immediately tells us that we, they were young, virtuous, noble girls who would do nothing unruly, the way young women should act. This was perceived as a new type of portrait. It was uncommon for children to be painted without their parents. And also, the raised hand of the sister and the other one where she keeps her eye contact whilst playing a chess move. She created an active narrative where it got the viewer thinking, what is it that they're talking about or thinking about? She was able to create an atmosphere within her painting to make the viewer question and assess the narrative. This was seen as quite innovative for a female painter. The chess game was a game that noble men and women could play. Had she used this purposefully, this narrative, where the queen is the most powerful piece, as a sense of female empowerment, Sophie Nisba managed to gain enough capability as a female painter to express herself in such manners. With her newfound confidence, although gently practiced into her work, she didn't threaten any cultural norms, but this allowed her to use portraits to express new ideas. Following later, artist Judith Leister and Artemis Gentileschi were painters that gained from this gradual confidence and they took pride in their work. Judith Leister was a successful Dutch artist her painting, her self-portrait, is of herself leaning back casually whilst painting a picture of a fiddler. She's smiling, which isn't normally common for a portrait painter, as this usually means drunkenness or some sort of mental inability. But she overturns the stereotype and she takes shares in the delight of the fiddler, of those who doubted her artistic ability. Gentileschi's self-portrait exudes artistic confidence. She epitomises her dramatic painting style. By leaving out the canvas, she draws the viewers in to herself as a metaphorical representation of painting. Instead of using an idealised composition of herself, she faces away from the viewer, seemingly absorbed into her own work. 
these pioneering artists may be considered to have put the foot into the door for future artists. They moved women away from traditional aspects of the suppressed art at the time. Although making headway, working achieving some sort of recognition or equality hadn't changed throughout the years following them. To begin with, these artists were merely trying to become themselves rather than break culture or social understanding. With limits as to how far they could go, they became complacent in achieving any, anything more than this. Although they did create a resilient ambition and a newfound interest in art for women and to be taken seriously. In 1771, the academicians of the Royal Academy was painted by Johann Zafani. Angelica Kaufman and Mary Moser were the only two female artists who were part of the 36 founding members. Both were vacated to painting representations on the wall. Although their absences from these paintings could be explained due to the fact that it's a life during class setup, and women were excluded from these due to matters of propriety. Although being accepted into art society and educational establishments, women were still afforded limits. They could only paint portraits or still life, as these were considered articulate, graceful and womanly. And paintings such as landscape, genre and history were considered too vigorous. Such cases reveal that women of institutional accreditations were tokenistic at best. In the mid late 19th century, Mary Cassatt was a part of the Impressionist movement. Painters such as Monet, Monet, Degas and Renoir used dance halls, cafes, bars and social spaces of cities as their main inspiration. These places were inaccessible for Cassatt. Paying tribute to a woman's experience, Mary Cassatt was known for expressing her depictions of mothers and their children. Cassatt brought the viewer into the woman's world, embracing the apparent weakness of a woman, the domestic life of a mother and child. As the 20th century came around, there was a new type of female artist. Loosened from the conventional notions of femininity and the how-tos on how to act, artists were no longer trivialised by a small sense of self. It was the empowering of the self that flourished into a change of culture. In the mid-20th century, the art world considered traditional portrait painting almost obsolete. The popularity of the portrait had diminished in favour of new movements and expressions. Instead of using past influences where the portrait usually presented idealised versions of the subject, Alice Neal used this artistic freedom to express her personal views of humanity. She found a new way to breathe life into the portrait. No longer painting for acceptance, the portrait was now used as another form of change. Another way to read the artist's personal responses of the society around them. They seem to now address social struggles and opinions through thought-provoking visuals. Hi, my name is Sarah Lavelle. Uh, I'm a portrait artist and I was a finalist on Sky Portrait Artist of the Year 2019. I think for me, portraiture is a about it's about capturing a quality of being human and being alive that goes beyond um, fear, uh, mere physical representation. Uh, I'm trying to unlock um, or capture what it means to be human and be alive. This this can be interpreted to mean um, depicting the soul or a life force or a consciousness or. Um, there's so many different from so many different words for it and this means I get to tap into my interest in psychology and philosophy and spirituality uh, in quantum physics and religion 
Um, and I think, uh, for me, it's a personal study. I, I've always struggled with my own idea of self, my own identity, uh, and uh, understanding who I really am in, in a very uh, personal and uh, multifaceted way. Uh, but it's also important for female artists all over um, to be exploring this idea in their work. Um, women are going through the process of redefining what it means to be a woman in society right now, uh, and in the household, and in oneself. Um, and this is really exciting, but it's also really challenging. Um, and I feel really grateful to be part of, of this this movement and this, this um, canon in, in what will become the history of art. I'd like to thank Doncaster Council for sponsoring this programme curated by Chimwe Russell. I hope you've enjoyed this video and gained a new perspective or understanding. And I'd also like to say, if you're an artist in Doncaster, please have a look at the New Fringe and the Doncaster Art Fair. They've provided new opportunities in Doncaster for the arts, for artists.